recording. Yeah, hello to you. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. So I am Diki Choden, faculty from the Royal University of Bhutan. And today I will be summarizing the major findings and I'll be telling you the broader relevance of my thesis titled Remediation of Contaminated Soil by Using Plant and Bacteria. Soil contamination is a global concern. Industrial activities, usage of agriculture pesticides, accidental oil spills, and improper disposal of waste has undoubtedly contributed to soil pollution and deteriorated the quality of the soil. One major contaminant of the soil are the heavy metals, such as zinc. Although zinc is an essentially required heavy metal for the proper growth and development of plants, anthropogenic input of zinc through activities such as mining, smelting, and application of sewage sludge on the soil has substantially increased the level of zinc, negatively affecting the crop yield and the soil fertility. Furthermore, organic pollutants such as petroleum and its derivatives are another major soil contaminant. The worst man-made environmental disasters such as the Gulf War of 1991 and the BP oil spill of 2010 has caused extensive damage to the marine and wildlife habitats. Pollutions released from the economic activities, industrial and the transport sector has captured the news headlines for several decades. Several studies have been conducted, numerous case studies has been done in order to understand the extent and the risks and impact associated with the soil contamination to the environment and the food security. According to the United States Environmental Protection Agency, approximately 40% of the hazardous waste sites are contaminated with both organic and heavy metal pollutants. Admit such problem now, the question arises is, is there any solution to such problem? And the answer is yes plants. Plants are not only beautiful, and it not only supplies us with fresh oxygen, but plants can also be used to clean the environment through a process called phytoremediation. So what is this phytoremediation? Very simple. Phyto means plant, and remediation means to remove the contaminants. So phytoremediation is a technology, a practice that employs or uses plants in order to clean the environment. But how does it happen? So the plants, they target and absorb the contaminants, especially the heavy metals from the soil and water, and then transfer these contaminants to the plant tissues. And later, this biomass is harvested and treated. Findings have suggested that a plant known as African basil, native to Africa and South Asia, which has been conventionally used for its medicinal and culinary purpose, this plant can be a potential plan for the cleanup of heavy metal contaminated sites. Additionally, this plant can also have some economic purposes since it can also be used for the production of essential oil and for the production of bioenergy. In the world of bioremediation, microorganisms are very essential. One very important microbe in bioremediation is Pseudomonas putida. This microbe has a very different metabolic pathway. It can be used for the destruction and the removal of various pollutants, particularly the petroleum and the organic pollutants. Studies have also suggested that a combination of such plant with the microbe can be used for the remediation or the treatment of sites that are contaminated by both heavy metal and petroleum products. Hence, the objective of my research was to use a combination of these two plants, these two candidates, the African basil in combination with the Pseudomonas putida for the removal of crude oil, that's a, that's a petroleum product, and for the removal of zinc, that is a heavy metal. So I tried to use a combination of the African basil along with the microbe Pseudomonas putida to treat the soil which is contaminated by both heavy metal and organic pollutants such as crude oil. So very simple, what I did in the lab was I added zinc and crude oil to the soil and I prepared this artificially contaminated soil in the lab. Then I grew the bacteria Pseudomonas putida and I also grew my plant African basil. I conducted a pot study for 60 days, that is roughly for two 
months. So these were the several treatments that I used and I wanted to see the efficiency of each of these treatment. So altogether there were four. The first one was the control where I used the plant. I grew the plant African basil in clean soil. And the second treatment, I grew the plant in the contaminated soil that I prepared in the lab. In the third treatment, I grew the bacteria alone in the contaminated soil. And in the fourth treatment, I used a combination of these plant and the bacteria in the contaminated soil. So these were the three treatments along with the control for my experiment. And overall, the experimental period was for 60 days. So over the period of 60 days, gradual changes in the plant morphology was observed. So here, if we see at the end of 60 days, these are the plant representative from each of the treatment. So there are only three treatments here because in one treatment plant wasn't used, only bacteria was grown. So here we can see the first plant, which was grown in the clean soil on day 60. At the end of the experiment, we can see these plants were the healthiest. They had the highest biomass the highest shoot length and the root length. However, if you look at the second plant from the second treatment on day 60, you can see that this plant grown in the contaminated soil suffered from a lot of toxic symptoms. It had various toxic symptoms and stunted growth. But comparatively, if you look at the third plant grown in the contaminated soil in the presence of bacteria, this plant grew relatively well. So for the plant that was grown in the contaminated soil, particularly for the second treatment, which was grown without the bacteria, we can see these plants are shorter. They had stunted growth and there was curling of leaves observed. And there was also yellowing of leaves, which is called chlorosis. And then there were some dying of tissues, particularly at the tip of the leaves, which is known as the necrotic spots. Moving on to the shoot length, uh, the shoot height and the shoot length, we can see that the shoot height and the shoot length. So if you look at the graph figure here, we can see, if you look at the shoot height, we can see that this figure, the first one, it represents the plants grown in the clean soil. So we can see here from, it's evident that the plants grew, that grew in the clean soil had the highest shoot height, followed by the plants grown in the contaminated soil in the presence of the bacteria, Pseudomonas butida. However, the lowest shoot height was recorded for the plants grew, grown in the contaminated soil alone without the bacteria. Similarly, if you look at the root length, we can see here that the plants grown in the clean soil had the highest root length, followed by the plants grown in the contaminated soil in the presence of bacteria, and the lowest root length was recorded for the plants grown in the contaminated soil alone without the bacteria. And I also calculated the growth rate. So at the end of 60 days, again, all the treatments, each treatment, you can see here, there are three pots, meaning there were three replicates. So what I did was at the end of the experiment, I harvested these plants, I dried these plants, and based on the dried biomass, I calculated the relative growth rate. So similar to the shoot length and the root length, we can see here the highest growth rate was observed for the plants grown in the clean soil. However, for the second treatment where the plant was grown in the contaminated soil without the bacteria, it had the lowest growth rate. And comparatively, the plant grown in the contaminated soil in the presence of bacteria, it had comparatively a better growth. So the potential of the uh, experimental plant African basil for its uptake and accumulation of zinc from the soil was also tested. So the results showed that the zinc was accumulated in the root as well as in the shoot. So if you like, look at the figure here, we can see that more zinc was accumulated in the roots compared to the shoot. So you can, so these are the zinc accumulation in this shoot in the two treatments, the contaminated soil. And then if you look at the concentration of zinc in the root, it was higher. So from this, what we can see, see is that zinc, the metal, heavy metal zinc was retained more in the root and that the transfer in the shoot was relatively less. And if you compare these two treatments where plants were grown in the contaminated soil without the bacteria and with the bacteria, you can see the treatment which did not add or use bacteria had a better 
uptake of zinc both in the root and the shoot compared to the treatment in which the bacteria was used. So the second treatment without the bacteria was the most efficient in uptaking and accumulating zinc from the soil. Moving on to the crude oil degradation, which mostly happens because of the microbial action and here in this experiment because of the Pseudomonas petita. So let's have a look at the results here. So you can see here from this figure, the purple line here, we can see this purple line represents the treatment in which both the plant and bacteria were grown in the contaminated soil. So these treatment which had the co combination of the plant and the bacteria had the highest removal of crude oil from the soil and the efficiency was 75.87%, meaning of the 100% of the crude oil applied on the soil, more than 75% of the crude oil degradation happened in this treatment. And if you look at the other two, the green one, the treatment in which bacteria was used and the red one in which only the plant was used, you can see here the treatment in which the bacteria was inoculated or used had better degradation of crude oil meaning the bacteria really helps in removing crude oil from the soil, unlike plants, which are more effective in removing heavy metals. And then moving on to the bacterial population, we can here see that this treatment shows the bacteria in the clean soil, and this treatment shows the bacteria in the contaminated soil with the plant, and this treatment shows the bacteria in the contaminated soil alone without the plant. And the final treatment shows the bacteria in the soil with the plant. So comparatively, we can see here the last treatment which comprised of both plant and bacteria had the highest density or the highest population of the bacteria. Then I also tried to see if there was any relationship with the microbial population and the crude oil degradation. And interestingly, what I found was that with the increase in microbial population in various treatment, there was an increase in the crude oil degradation. So what we can deduce from here is that micro, the microbial organisms used in the experiment did help in the crude oil degradation. So in summary, what we can say is that there was a very good there was a positive interaction between the plant African basil and the microbe Pseudomonas putida used in this experiment, which actually helped in the removal of crude oil from the soil. However, when it comes to the removal of zinc, we saw that the treatment which did not use the bacteria was most efficient in removing the zinc. So mostly the zincs were retained in the roots and the transfer in the shoot was very minimal. So meaning these plant can be used for the stabilization for making the zinc immovable in the environment by reducing the dispersion. So overall, we can see that a combination of the plant African basil along with the microorganism Pseudomonas putida can help us stabilize zinc and remove crude oil in contaminated soil. Thank you so much for your attention.